into a story of famous royals, football stars, not to mention some really fabulous cars, plus saving the planet too. What's not to love? So when our next guest saw wedding photos of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle driving off in a Jaguar E-Type which had been converted to electric power, it inspired a business which gives classics like these a whole new lease of life. Lunas restores Aston Martins, Range Rovers, Rolls Royces, Bentleys and Jaguars and adds electric drivetrains instead of their original combustion engines. Among the investors in one of the UK's fastest growing companies is David Beckham. And it's not just classic cars. The company's also working on industrial vehicles like refuse trucks. David Lorenz is the CEO of Lunas and he joins us now. David, great to have you on. This is a phenomenal concept. It's a sexy classic car meets sustainability, but I know it's about way more than that. Um, give us the ethos of the company. Exactly. So we take vehicles that already exist and we upcycle and electrify them for a cleaner future. We really want to enhance what upcycling can do as we see this transition from the ICE to clean air powertrain. So we started with classic cars where we built the first electric Rolls Royce in the world, the first electric Bentley, the first electric Range Rovers, but also have Luna's applied technology where we apply the same approach of taking what already exists, restoring and upcycling it. And this can be applied to thousands, if not millions of vehicles around the world and enhancing all of that embedded carbon, which is within these vehicles. And it's it's just about everything, it's, power steering, sorry. uprated brakes, suspension, air conditioning, even Apple CarPlay. Exactly. So we take every car and uh, industrial vehicle back to its bare nuts and bolts. So they get fully stripped down, everything comes off the vehicle, and then we rebuild them from the ground up. With the classics, we go through a painstaking thousands of hours of restoration, redoing the interior, exterior, adding air conditioning, heating, as you said, Apple CarPlay, all of the mod cons you would expect with heated seats, electric windows, etc. And really looking at how we can transition these vehicles for future generations to enjoy. You know, my daughter's four years old, Luna, and I really wanted her to be able to see and enjoy and drive these vehicles as we enter a new age of clean air powertrain. And it was the perfect answer for institutions around the world, whether it's hotels or restaurants. And really looking at fleet vehicles with Rolls Royces and Bentleys, where they didn't have the option for an electric luxury vehicle in this sector. And we wanted to provide what they needed and required as an institution. And uh, it's fantastic to see them on the road. And I'm in London today, and it's lovely seeing them driving around. OK, what's the cost, David? And how long does it take to, um, I'll use the word pimp, pimp one of these rides to go back to that old show on TV that yeah. did similar, but not quite, not quite the same as this? Yeah, very slightly different to that, I must say. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the way to now with different cars for Q4 next year, and the prices start at 350,000 for the Jaguars, going up to 1.2 million for the Aston Martin DB6 platform that we've developed. And they vary across the platforms. And we've got from limousines in the Rolls Royce categories to Range Rovers with no roofs. And there's a huge category to choose from. And then you get led into the hands of our design team, Jen Holloway, who used to be the head of Aston Q Ranch. And where you get to tailor these vehicles is really where the journey begins with Lunas uh, design. But it's, it's, it's an amazing concept and it's an amazing when people enter the factories because not only do they see people designing classics within the design studio, but you've also got bin lorries being designed and taking sustainable materials and transitioning these you know, commercial vehicles which haven't been thought about as such at how they can transition for the future generation. And uh, it's an incredible blend between the two products of Luna's design and applied technologies. Yeah, I want to talk about that in two seconds. Just a final question on this. What do the purists say, the classic car purists? Who, who's your customer base here? Because there will be those that say, you know, one of the beauties of a classic car is, you know, you, you lift the bonnet and you look at the engine and now you look at a battery and it's a bit like hmm, as good as it is for the planet. Exactly. Who's the customer? So, so we, were really we were really focused on individuals that everyone loves a classic car. A lot of people don't go near ownership and we wanted to answer the reliability, usability and sustainability element of classic car ownership and really focus on the institutions where we could look at the fleet cars and how we could see classic Rolls Royces and classic Bentleys outside hotels as driving their guests around throughout the day. But it's amazing, you know, with the purists, we work very closely and uh, we've done multiple tours now with, for example, the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club, who we've got a great relationship with. and. You know, when they first came to Lunas, of course, there was a lot of skeptical sides to it. But when yeah. they come and they uncover and they get to see firsthand 
the level of restoration and work and quality that goes into all of these vehicles. They're proud, and uh, it's an incredible thing, and I'm sure Henry Royce himself would have been proud. <laughs> um, talk to me about the commercial side of this then, too, and, and the breakdown in the business. If we talk about it in terms of, sort of revenue and profitability generation, is the bulk of the business going to be, at some point in the future, big contracts to electrify refuse vehicles, for example, commercial, yeah. industrial vehicles versus the sort of more niche luxury classic cars, which admittedly are very beautiful. How, how do you see the pipeline, the orders and the split of the business going forward? Because I'm sure you're hiring people too for for the work that's got to be done. No, exactly. And it, it, it already is a much larger side to our business. So with Luna's design, we created the factory at Silverstone overlooking the Formula One circuit to build 120 cars a year. But you know, we're working now with the largest industrial fleet owners in the UK and Europe. And our facility is built to upcycle and electrify these. And it's six times larger than the current facility we have with a 1,200 vehicle capacity um, on the industrial side. You know, the scale side of Lunas is completely on the industrial side of our business. Um, but Lunas design is that incredible passion that comes through. But it's the answer to the quality and assurance of the capability of the engineering team. And they really do go side by side because it's it really is the perfect blend of how you can upcycle a vehicle, whether it's from 1961 or from 2016. You know, this is a super cash intensive business. I can already imagine, particularly as you're you're ramping up. We've obviously shown various images of one of your investors, which is, of course, David Beckham. Um, are you profitable? Do you even think about that right now or in growth phase? No, at the moment, we're purely in growth phase. You know, we are investing heavily into the company, you know, building uh, in different applications where upcycling is the right approach to this transition. You know, David was drawn to Lunas because the limitless possibilities that electrification and upcycling has. And we've got an incredible portfolio of investors behind the company, which really see the true potential. And we can't wait to globalize this solution. Yeah, it's so exciting to see. Very last question and very quick. Did David Beckham get a big discount? Of course not. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, with, okay. with these cars, there's that. <laughs> those and, uh, David appreciates this. and uh, he, He's an incredible investor and an incredible client of Luna's. Mm. And uh, I'm just so glad that he really sees the limitless possibilities of where the company is going. And he was firstly attracted by what we were doing on the commercial front. You know, it's what really gripped uh, yes. the relationship between the two of us. Yeah, he's great. He's investing in the business, too. Your, your first sentence was the best. Of course not. Great to chat to you, David. Come back and talk <laughs> to us soon, please. Fascinating to see David Lorenz there. Thank you.